Hello, thank you for joining me for this virtual talk. My name is James Ferlez, and I'm a postdoc at the University of California, Irvine. Today I'm going to talk about our paper, which introduces both the algorithm and the tool, Fast Battle NN, which is for fast box analysis of two-level lattice neural networks. This is joint work with a PhD student, Haitham, and my postdoc advisor, Yasser. It'll come as no surprise to this community that neural networks are increasingly used in safety critical control loops, and this has led to an interest in formally verifying their properties, often with Lots of static verifications are required to do so. One example of this is verifying the safety of a neural network controller by means of reachability. So suppose we have this discrete time linear system controlled by a neural network, and we're interested in ensuring that the state remains in some set X safe across time. We can start at a particular time by bounding the possible sets that it states that it could be in, in some convex polytope, XT of rocks. And then we can try to ensure that xt plus 1 is safe, or verify that xt plus 1 is safe, by pushing that set through the system matrix A to obtain another convex polytope, and choosing some set S of t plus 1 that stays inside the set x safe when it's translated to each of the vertices of that polytope A times xt approx. Then we can verify that the neural network controller is safe for xt approx if it maps xt approx to st plus 1. Of course, this will have to be done across multiple times, so many verifications are required in closed loop. Another example where many static neural network verifications are required is in verifying the robustness of safety critical neural network classifiers. So there are many known examples of non-robust classifiers creating safety problems. So these are just a couple of well-known examples. But the important point here is that verifications are usually done to verify robustness around each of the data points on which the network is trained, of which there are usually quite a few. So again, many verifications required. So since we have to do so many verifications, we'd like our neural network verifiers to be as fast as possible. The typical approach to this is just to come up with the fastest possible algorithm for generic, deep, fully connected neural networks. There are many examples of this approach. Unfortunately, this approach is known to be hard in the worst case because you can have exponentially many linear regions. So an approach we've been taking is to instead consider particular neural network architectures that allow us to use the structure, their structure and semantics to make the, the verification problem easier. So one example of this is some of our prior work where we showed that two-level lattice neural networks are verifiable in polynomial time, at least in the number of neurons. So the current work uh, extends this idea by considering not just particular neural network architectures, but particular properties that allow us to further exploit the structure and semantics of the architecture to obtain yet faster neural network verifications. And that's what Fast Battle N is about. So it considers verifying TLL neural networks with box-like or hyper-rectangle output constraints. And so compared to our prior work on TLL neural networks with generic polytope output constraints, Fast Battle NN has half the crucial expo exponent in its computational complexity, so quite a bit faster. So formally, and for simplicity, let's consider just a scalar TLL neural network verification problem. So a scalar TLL neural network from Rn to R, and we have some uh, convex polytope constraint on its input, that's Px, specified by n sub x half spaces, and some convex polytope in its output, Py, which because it's just R, the real line, is the closed interval AB. Then we say the TLL verification problem is to decide whether the following formula is true, that is, for all x in Px, the output of the TLL neural network is in Py. If formula star is true, we say the problem is sat, otherwise we say it's unsat. So we'll notice that this formulation is dual, more or less, to the usual uh, formulation of a verification problem in the literature, but this form is particularly suited to reachability. So if you recall the example I showed two slides ago, given a, uh, an input constraint px, we're interested in showing that the output is within some set all the time in order to verify safety. So of course, it's trivially easy to extend this to multi-output TLLs by just considering a conjunction of m scalar verification problems. However, back to problem one, we're going to further decompose it into two subproblems. That is, an instance of problem one can be verified as a conjunction of an instance of problem 1a, which is verifying the output of the TLL is always less than or equal to b, and an instance of problem 1b, which is verifying that the output of the TLL is always greater than or equal to a. So what do hyper-rectangular box-like constraints have to do with TLL neural networks? So I'll just remind you of the definition of a TLL neural network. So a TLL neural network is composed of capital M local linear functions and capital M selector sets, each of which selects some subset of the local linear functions. And so then we have 
one min operation per selector set, which takes the minimum of the output of the local linear functions selected by that selector set, and then all of these min functions are fed through a common max function, which computes the final output of the TLL. So what does this have to do with blocks like uh, output constraints? So the local linear functions appear directly in the output of the TLL. Furthermore, in a TLL, these local linear functions are compared by their outputs using max or min lattice operations, and those are max and min operations over real numbers. So this is particularly convenient because in a box like output constraint, we're interested in these functions being, the output of the TLL being greater than or less than some constant. So the idea is that these max and min functions sort of help us identify whether the overall network has a violation. And so just as a matter of notation, each of these min operations we're going to call a min term. So what approach do we take to problem 1A? Well, we can easily reformulate problem 1A in terms of looking for violations. So in particular, problem 1A is sat if there exists no violation, that is, there exists no x in px, such that the output of the neural network exceeds b. So just recall, again, the definition of a TLL neural network. And we're going to have a specific notation here for the min terms. So each min term is specified by a selector set sj. Its corresponding min term, or the output of it, will be this omega j of x. So the main idea is that each individual local linear function exceeds the verification property b on a linear half space. And so we can convert these lattice operations of min max to set operations of unit and intersection over linear half spaces. So in particular, when is the output of the neural network greater than b? It's greater than b when at least one of its min terms is greater than b. So this is going to turn into a set union. And when is a uh, min term greater than b? A min term is greater than b precisely when each one of the local linear functions it consists of is greater than b. And so this looks like a set intersection. So in particular, we can show that problem 1a is equivalent to not having any violations in the sense that none of these intersections of half spaces has any points in it. In other words, this union of intersections is empty. Conversely, there's a violation if one of these intersection terms is non-empty. So we can solve problem 1a, or verify problem 1a, in terms of each of its individual min terms by formulating a set of linear constraints, fj, associated with a particular selector set. And so each of these fj's has one linear constraint for each of the local linear functions in its associated selector set, and one linear constraint for each of the half spaces that specify the input constraint polytope. So in particular, you'll also note that we've converted the greater than from the half spaces in the previous slide to a greater than equal here. So we can determine whether this f sub j has any points in it using a linear program. This comes at the expense of just having to check further that it has a non-empty interior. This just costs us an extra LP per selector set. So we have the following straightforward algorithm for verifying problem 1a. We just consider each of the selector sets in turn. We construct the associated set of linear constraints f sub j, check to see if it's feasible and whether it has an empty interior. If both are true, then we have witnessed a violation, so we return on set. But if we examine all of the selector sets without finding a violation, we can return set. So as a result, we can solve problem 1a using big O of M LPs, and each LP has a number of constraints equal to the number of local linear functions plus the number of half spaces that specify the uh, input constraint px. The dimension of that LP is, of course, the same as the input to the neural network, lowercase n. So that's problem 1a. How do we solve problem 1b? Well, we can certainly reformulate it in terms of looking for a violation, but we can't do quite the same thing. And why is that? Because when is the output of a TLL neural network less than a? when all of the min terms are less than a. So what was a set union in problem 1a becomes a set intersection in problem 1b. And when is, the, when is a particular min term less than a? It's less than a precisely when at least one of its local linear functions is less than a. So what was a set intersection in problem 1a becomes a set union in problem 1b. So this leads to the following equivalence, where we have no violation if some intersection of unions of half spaces is empty. So the union of half spaces is, of course, problematic because this is not directly translatable into a linear program. However, we do know how to handle intersections of half spaces. So what we can do is just set operations to convert this set of interest into the following form. So now we have some union over intersections of half spaces. However, we have one intersection of half spaces for each term in this multi-index. This multi-index 
is the cardinality of the product of the selector sets. So it starts to look like we might get, in the worst case, all the subsets of local linear functions. That is one intersection term for each subset of local linear functions. This is starting to look like exponential verification, which would be bad. Well, we don't have to quite settle ourselves with that. We just have to be a little bit more clever. So recall that we want to avoid enumerating all of the multi-indexes in this set. So what can we do? We can create, consider a hyperplane arrangement, H sub A, where A is the uh, output constraint property. And these hyperplanes are formed by shifting each of the local linear functions precisely by this constraint. And so, in particular, a, we have several facts. First, a region of this hyperplane arrangement is a feasible linear program of the following form that contains an n-dimensional Euclidean ball. And so this linear program simply multiplies each of the hyperplanes by plus or minus one to specify being on one side or the other but it's important that it has to contain an n-dimensional Euclidean ball. Moreover, the number of regions in this hyperplane arrangement is only polynomial in the number of local linear functions. And finally, if we consider any particular multi-index, and let i hat sub 1 through i hat sub k be its unique indices, that is the unique local linear functions appearing in the multi-index, because of course different selector sets may contain the same local linear function, then we have the following equivalence, so the associated intersection term, that's the intersection term associated with that multi-index, is not empty, i.e. witnesses a violation, if and only if it contains a witness region from the hyperplane arrangement. So intuitively, you can think about this as the uh, multi-index specifies some, but not all of the negative signs in a legitimate region, if that region is not empty. So what we can do is simply enumerate all the regions of this hyperplane arrangement, of which there are only polynomially many, and check to see if each is a witness to any one of the intersection terms in the set we care about. So if we find a witness region, then we have witnessed the violation, we can return unsat, but if we exhaust all of the regions without finding any violation, then we can return sat. So what do we get by considering hyperrectangle constraints versus polytopic constraints? in our prior work for TLLs. So you'll recognize the complexity of problem 1a shown here for fast battle in N, and I've skipped some steps to show you directly the complexity for problem 1b, as we just described it. So compared to our prior work for TLLs with generic polytopic output constraints, we know that the crucial exponent, the large one, has half the exponent in fast battle in N as it does in our prior work, which means we can verify hyperrectangle output constraints with big O of capital N, the number of local linear functions, to the input dimension versus the number of local linear functions to two times the input dimension. So intuitively, this is because we, in fast battle in N, with hyperrectangle output constraints, we can consider the local linear functions individually and not in pairs. We should also note that fast battle in N uses smaller LPs, which is a further computational savings. So how does fast battle in N compare to generic neural network verifiers, that is verifiers which can verify an arbitrary generic deep neural network? We did some numerical experiments to test this. So we randomly generated some scalar TLL neural networks with input dimension two and various numbers of local linear functions. And we generated these on purpose to be as non-degenerate as possible on the input polytope constraint PX, which is the rectangle minus two, two in both dimensions. So just to be explicit, we generated one property then for each of these networks in a random way. So we took some random samples from this input polytope. We found the max and the min output of the neural network, the associated neural network for those samples. And we chose the property to verify it to be uniform on an interval that was equally likely to result in a true property or a false property with the direction of the equality chosen by a coin flip. So choosing a timeout of 300 seconds, we compared fast battle in N with a number of state-of-the-art neural network verifiers on this test suite. And in particular, note that fast battle in N with either four cores or 24 cores was able to successfully prove all of these properties. In fact, you can see that fast battle in N was using less than a second for all of these properties, whereas none of the state-of-the-art neural network verifiers were able to verify the entire test suite. So this is a strong motivation for considering TLL neural networks in the future, pretty much anything you want to do where you're eventually going to want to use formal verification. That I'd like to conclude. Of course, Fast Battle in N is available at the URL shown on the screen, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you for your attention.